In this video, I'm gonna show you a neat configuration on the Palo Alto firewall to stop or slow down internet attackers in order to keep your public server safe. This is a rather straightforward configuration to set up, but for some reason, I haven't seen it being implemented very often. Let's dive in. Hey there, my name is Ricardo, and today I'm gonna use Panorama to push the configuration to my perimeter firewall. For the configuration from today, you need the threat prevention license. We're going to leverage the vulnerability protection feature to automatically identify and block attackers for a certain time. In this tutorial, we're going to configure a 24-hour quarantine for these bad IPs. Let's do it! So this is my panorama. And we're going to start by creating a tag. We're going to make the whole configuration as shared configurations so that all my firewalls receive the information about the bad IPs and also have a rule to block them. So we're going to start by creating a tag. Go into Objects tags and I'm going to create a new tag click on add called bad IPs dynamic dynamic and I'm going to set this tag as a shared tag I'm going to choose the color red then we're going to create an address group so go to address group click on add choose shared and I'm going to call this one GRP from group bad IPs dynamic. And we're going to choose the type dynamic. Click on add match criteria. And I'm going to add the tag that we just created. There, just like this. Here under tags, please don't enter this bad IPs dynamic as a tag but you should choose something else. In my case, I'm gonna just choose outside. Click on OK. Now we're gonna create a log forwarding profile. If you go down a little bit, you're gonna see log forwarding. Still under objects. So on the log forwarding, we can select the default one that has already been created. In this case, Palo Alto created this automatically for me. And I'm going to choose clone. Here I'm going to choose shared. Click on OK. And I'm going to click this one, the created one. And I'm going to enter here LF from log forwarding underscore bad underscore IPs. And here I'm going to add a new entry or a new profile. I'm going to call this one add tag bad IPs dynamic. Under log type, I'm going to choose threat. Under filter, I'm going to click on this little arrow and click on filter builder. I'm going to choose for attribute severity. Choose greater than or equal. And I'm going to choose for this lab medium. This is something that you need to see on your for your environment, which kind of level you want to, to choose. If I choose medium, it means that for the security policies that I apply this log forwarding, every time there is a hit, Palo Alto is going to verify if this hit could be a threat. And if yes, the IP address is only going to be tagged if this threat is of severity medium, high or critical. If it's low or informational, this log forwarding won't be matching. You could choose maybe in your company environment you want to start with high, it means high and critical. For this lab, I'm just going to choose medium. And you're going to click on OK. Now here on the left side forward method for the lab, I'm not going to change anything, but you could you could choose, for example, to receive an email every time an IP address is flagged as a bad IP for example, or send some information to syslog or whatever. You can take a look. My disk from Panorama is a small disk, so I don't have any Panorama logs. But if you have Panorama and you're logging to Panorama, it would probably make sense to check this, this box so that you can see all these threads also on Panorama. And here on the right side, built-in actions, there is some more stuff to do. We're going to click on Add. I'm going to choose a name for the action. Add tag, 
bad IPs dynamic div underscore. You're gonna choose type, it's gonna be tagging because you want to tag bad IP addresses. The target is gonna be source address, the IP address from the attacker. Add tag, we're gonna leave this local user ID. Timeout, if you raise the zero, you're gonna see the range. So from zero to 43,200 in minutes, I'm gonna set to one day. So it's 1,440 minutes. If you if I've left on zero, it means that this IP address that has been flagged as a bad IP would stay forever. In my case, I just want this IP address to be flagged as a bad IP for one day. Of course, you can set the value that you want in your environment. Under tags, I'm gonna choose the created tag. So bad IPs. This configuration means when IP is flagged as a bad IP because it hit the vulnerability threat medium, critical or high, gets this tag. So far, that's all that's the Palo Alto is doing is not blocking anything. So we're gonna click on okay. And we're gonna click on okay. 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 So before we configure a rule to block these IP addresses, these bad IP addresses, I want to show you something. You need to configure the data redistribution so that the file that flags an IP as a bad IP, that this information also gets propagated to all other files. For me, it makes sense that all the files in your environment have this information regarding the bad IP addresses. So for that, I configured in my environment already a data redistribution. So if you have many files, the file that flags the IP is gonna replicate this information to Panorama and Panorama is gonna take care to replicate to all other files. Let me show you how you did. If you're interested in the free VPN connection sheet or cheat sheet from the Palo Alto file, take a look at netsum.com slash resources. Now back to the video. If you go to device, under data redistribution, and here under agent, for this file PA, I have a configuration that this file should get the information from Panorama. You should do the same for all, all files. So here I enter a name, click on enable, I set serial number and here you can choose Panorama if the file is connected to Panorama. And as a data type, I want IP tags. If you need some other stuff, like IP user map is also a popular one. In our case, for this example, we just want the IP tags. Like I said, you should do this to all your files so that they can get the information from Panorama. And I want also the other way around that Panorama is able to get this inform the information from this file. So under collector settings, I also configured a name for collector and a pre-shared key. And if you go to the Panorama configuration, or for the Panorama session, sorry, also under data redistribution, you can go to agent, and here I have the agent, my file, here's the FQDN, the collector name that I just showed, and the pre-shared key. And here also again, IP tags. So with this configuration, the information can go both ways, from, from the file to Panorama, and if I have other files, from these other files going through Panorama and getting redistributed, redistributed to all of them. If you need some more information regarding data redistribution, check this video here. I'm gonna link, leave a link in the description. There I go a little bit deeper in the configuration of the data redistribution using Panorama. So now let's go back to our topic here confi to configure our policy. We're gonna create now a new policy to be able to block the bad IPs. So we're gonna go to shared. We see that there is no pre-rules. We're gonna create a rule on the very top. Click on add. I'm gonna call this rule bad IPs dynamic source. It's gonna be my outside. Actually, I'm gonna leave the source as any. I won't care where the IP address is coming from. And here I'm gonna add my group bad IPs dynamic as a destination. I don't care where this IP is trying to go to and with which protocol I want to block this guy. 
So I'm setting everything to any, application any, service URL any, and here on the destination, maybe I was a little bit too fast, I chose, I left everything as any. Here has been already. Action, of course, I want to drop this guy, and that's it. So I can click on OK. So now I have a rule on the very top, blocking the IP. So this rule is going to be responsible to block these IPs that have been flagged with this tag. Sorry, not with this tag, with the tag bad IPs dynamic. The last thing we need to do now is to choose a rule that's going to be used to flag these IPs. Because so far, whenever the IPs get flagged, they get blocked. But we don't have any rules that's been used to verify what this attacker is doing. So behind this firewall in my lab, I have a Linux server, Ubuntu server, running a, a web server. And if you go to post rules, we have this rule here, allow web server Ubuntu. It's allowing everything from the internet to this server, to my Ubuntu. Well, SSL, web browsing, and ACME protocol. Now, if we set the actions, on this rule, under log forwarding, if we set to log forwarding bad IPs, so the Palo Alto is going to be paying attention to the traffic that's going to this Linux server, and if it recognizes a vulnerability, and the severity would be either medium, high, or critical, in this case the Palo Alto is going to set these IP addresses with a tag, bad IPs. Plus, I need to set at least a profile type. I'm going to set to profile. And then here on the, under vulnerability protection, I'm going to set to one that I have created only alert. It means that this vulnerability protection doesn't do anything. It just alerts. But as far as I know, if you don't set any profile settings here, the threats won't be detected. So just press OK. So we're going to commit this configuration. And then I'm going to try to simulate an attack to this web server. So in order to test the configuration, I came here to this website, pentest-tools.com. And I chose under built-in vulnerability scanners, this port scanner. I entered here my host name. I have an FQDN that was pointing to my server webserver.netsums.com and I clicked on start scanning and it's going to be scanning in the background and at the file I can see that let's go to unified and here's the address, the internal address from my server and under unified you can see that some threats, this threat was recognized and map scripting engine detection and of course, it set the IP address to have this, the tag, the bad IPs tag. And it matched the group. If we come here to the policies now, and if you can hear just by the source address, of course, this is our group, click on this little arrow, go to value, and here, since it's a dynamic address group, you can see a little link called more. And if you click on this more, you're going to go to the to the list of the IP addresses. And here you can see that there's one IP address that has been blocked. If you click on unregistered tags, you can, let's say, whitelist this IP address. This IP address is not going to be on the blacklist anymore. So you click on unregister, click on add, and then you want to unregister the tag bad IPs. So you click on OK. And it takes a little while. But after a while, the IP address is going to disappear from this list. Let's take a look, take a couple of seconds. There they go. Now it's gone. Just one tip. I'm back now to Panorama. And if I try to do the same there, remember before I was at the file, now I'm at, the, at Panorama. And here I cannot see the IP addresses. So if you want to see the IP addresses, you should go to the file. And there's one more thing that I would like to mention. Let's say, for example, that your company owns the network 20.2.2.0 slash 24. 
it should never happen that one of the IP addresses that you own go into this dynamic list. So in order to avoid your IP addresses going to this blacklist, you can come to Object, Log Forwarding, and then you open your Log Forwarding profile that you created, go down to the one that we added, and here under Filter, you can see that the filter is missing the severity. Let me just enter the severity that we created before. Click on Add. And here we should add source IP address, source address, not in, and then you enter the IP address like this. Click on Add and click on OK. So in this case, this filter is going to be excluding the, the network 20.2.2.0/24, assuming that this network is owned by you. This is the way to do it. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video until the end. I hope you got some value from the video. If you did, if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And maybe this video here is going to help you further with the Palo Alto configuration. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.